I'll call to order the Iowa City Council Economic Development Committee meeting of Thursday, October 19th. Can we start just by going around? It helps for the minutes to introduce. I'm Susan Mims, Iowa City City Council. Simon Andrew, Assistant to the City Manager. Jeff Fruin, City Manager. Wendy Ford, Economic Development Coordinator. Jim Throgmorton, Mayor. Rockney Cole, City Council. Andre Perry, Ingrid Peter. Thank you, everyone. Item two, consider approval of minutes from the September 15th meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Passes 3 0. Item number three, consider the annual report and request for funding from Angler Theater for $50,000. Andre, why don't you come join us? Can, can we have, make sure this is a reasonably brief discussion? Uh, what I'm thinking is uh, we have lots of respect for what the Englert does, et cetera. And uh, I'd like to make sure we move ahead on uh, our revisions to the TIF policy. I right, second. Okay, well, <clears throat> excuse me, I can be brief, certainly. Um, the Angler, the, we have, the city has supported the Englert Theater since fiscal year 2009 um, in amounts that you'll see listed in the table in the memo in your packet. Um, that amount has been steadily $50,000 since then. Um, however, in fiscal years 16 and 17, uh, the Englert or, or the EDC and the council also also approved an additional $20,000 for capital improvement e expenses. And those were in part to um, build a lounge on the second floor uh, gallery space. And um, the second year was to build a concession area in the first floor lobby area, both of which um, helped to bring an additional revenue and offset some of the losses the theaters experienced over um, the ha having lost some of the business that rented uh, while School of Music um, and the Division of P Performing Arts did not have their own uh, places to perform. Um, they have requested the $50,000 in operational funds again this year, and as you'll note in the mem memo, the Englert has uh, more, has almost doubled their budget in the years we've been assisting them. They have uh, more than doubled the amount of patrons that come in on an annual basis. And I think most astonishingly, and realizing the need for um, for income outside of earned revenue, they have increased the Friends of the Angular program where our citizens um, step up and contribute to the uh, organization. They have increased that more than tenfold since 2008. Um, and you'll, you'll note in the memo also that the Friends program netted back 10 years ago about $28,000 and in 2016 netted $156,000. So I just wanted to make that point because the Englert, while asking the city for continuing financial support, has also um, done uh, a fair share of, of increasing their un unearned support as well. And uh, to be brief, I think I'll probably just hand it over to Andre at sure. this point to Say Thanks. a few words. Welcome, Andre. Uh, thank you so much, guys, uh, for having me. And I understand you guys are trying to move things. So I'll be very brief. If you have any questions, just stop me and, and ask me. Um, so I'll just make a very few points here. One, a continued thank you to the City Council, Economic Development Committee, City staff uh, for the ongoing support and council um, as we move the Englert forward. And as Wendy noted, there has been a lot of growth in in the in the past years over the last ten years. Um, and, you know, in some years, you know, we're, we're met with great success, and some years are more challenging as we try to figure out how to navigate um, the space that we're in. Uh, but the thing that I would just want to remind the council is, you know, the reasons why we're here, the reasons why we exist, are, are you know married. And one of them is, you know, we're trying to bring liveliness to the downtown to make it a space that is, you know, feels like it's an exciting place to be. Um, part of what we do is economic development, you know, bringing people downtown to infuse us with, you know, like economic energy. Um, but I think the other 
part that we're working on is to ensure that we are bringing, you know, a soul to downtown Iowa City that is a space that feels like it is home for the people who live here and that when they wake up, they're happy that they moved to Iowa City. They're happy that they stayed in Iowa City. And so that's the work that we continue to do um, and to also ensure that, you know, this is, you know, th this is a positive place. And as our community continues to change, continues to expand, uh, as we get new folks in here, uh, we want to continue to make this the welcoming place that they see. And, that, and that's the Angler Theater. So uh, I did submit a packet for your, for your review. Um, if you have any questions, I would lo love to ask them, but I know you guys are trying to move things along here. And at any point, you know, I am always available uh, within these meetings or outside of these meetings. And just again, appreciative of all the support and advice that we get from you guys. Well, and yeah. Any questions? Well, I'd just like to emphasize how important the Angler is to uh, what we're trying to, to accomplish in Iowa City. I, I th totally support what you're doing. Uh, so. I'm eager to support this as well. I am too, and I think this is a nearly perfect illustration of an effective public-private partnership. It's a trusted nonprofit with a track record, and that makes the decision to fund extraordinarily easy. And thank you so much for your great work too. I just want to clarify uh, one thing so you understand um, where our thought is on this. The past two years, as Wendy mentioned, we had included additional 20000 in capital support, and that's not included in this request. That is because that uh, that we have budgeted uh, five hundred thousand dollars for each of the next two years, the current fiscal year and next fiscal year, in anticipation of a capital campaign to uh, do a historic preservation project on the Englert Theater itself. So that's why you're not seeing that twenty, because there will be a larger ask down the road, um, which we're currently working on right now. Well, I would just echo Jim and Rockney's comments. I mean, the Angler is an incredible asset to downtown and appreciate everything that you're doing, Andre, and your staff. And, and I go back to comments that Tom Marcus made many times when he was here, and that is that it's a whole lot better and easier for the city to have a privately owned theater and to partner with you than it is for the city to own it ourselves. Um, certainly much cheaper, and, you know, when it comes back to that and, you know, great people that are running it. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, I would entertain a motion to uh, support the request for the funding. So moved. Second. Moved by Cole, seconded by Throgmorton. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, number four, consider an annual report and request for funding from Mission Creek for $20,000. Oh, sorry. Wendy? Or There's uh, a two-part memo, and uh, the second part in your packet talks a little bit about Mission Creek. Uh, Mission Creek is one of the hallmark events, if not the hallmark event, uh, at the Englert every year. And a couple of years ago, the production of it was taken over by the Englert. So that is why we also have Andre here today to um, talk about that. Um, you'll also see in your packet that there's been a, a stream of funding to Mission Creek Festival, which now is in its, I always get this wrong, Andre, 13th year? Going into its 13th year. Going into its 13th year. Um, and uh, provides a, a, a festival that is dedicated to exploring the unknown, discussing creative processes, and presenting new work, which I think is something unique and uh, only happens in some of the larger metropolitan areas, something that really, um, something that really sets Iowa City apart. Uh, this year's request is the same as last year for $20,000, and staff also recommends the support of Mission Creek Festival. Andre, if you'd like to say a couple of words um, on that. I think you actually just described witching hour. Oh, shoot. <laughs> it's okay. You're right. <laughs> They're both awesome. Yeah. They're both awesome. awesome. Yeah. Okay. We'd support and that the too. The does so many great things. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. No, no, yeah. no, it's fine. Um, Ed, I don't think I have much to add. Again, uh, thank you for, for the same reasons for both the, the financial support and pushing this festival forward, but also the advice and the feedback that we get from both council members and staff as we try to grow this event. Uh, two things I will note. One is, you know, we last year was an adjustment year, or this past year was an adjustment year. As the landscape changed a little bit, um, we did have Hancher come online, and so we had to figure out some things about how do we shift, you know, the balance of this festival with Hancher in the room, and it's been a great partnership with them, and I think we figured some things out that have really helped us design the 2018 festival. Uh, but furthermore, uh, we've actually doubled down on our commitment uh, to ensure that there are a lot of like 
high quality free events and community engagement events that happen during the festival. We've identified the Saturday of the festival as our community day. Um, so while we do have those ticketed events that are, you know, drive important revenue, um, we also have these community events that I think reach a lot of different segments of the population and a lot of different ages in the population. And so that's something that we're going to continue to push forward um, with 2018 and beyond. So those are my short notes. But if you guys have any other questions, I'm happy to answer those and address them. Thank you. Motion to approve. So move. Second. Move by Throgmorton, second by Cole. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes 3 0. Thank you very much, Andre. Thank you so much, Thank guys. You. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Item number five review and consider recommendation of TIF policy updates to the City Council. Uh, Wendy, do you want to take a minute just to kind of run through that new edited version, maybe just to make sure? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think red lines are always. I know. Not They're hard. And I. I apologize that they come off so small in the packet, but I do think it gives you a good idea to track where, literally mm -hmm. track the changes to the uh, to the policies as you've written them. Um, perhaps um, the two most notable changes are uh, Mayor Throgmorton's proposed revisions to the language for the what what con what will constitute an exceptional public benefit um, for uh, projects seeking. Uh, to exceed the desired heights uh, in the desired heights map for their projects. Um, and that is uh, hopefully easy to, to see as the boxed in section on what is page 41 of your packet. Um, that's the one change. I don't know if you want to talk about those particularly right now, but just below that is the uh, historic preservation section, which um, with some help, thank you to uh, Alicia Trimble, Trimble, who's here in the audience, um, with a description of the what, what constitutes a contributing uh, building, we've made some changes to the descriptions of uh, the, the four ways that buildings can be described or classified as historic in downtown. And that's also on page 41 in your packet, and you can note that uh, they include um, the, the highest value being um, a building that is on the National Register of Historic Places. That's A. B is uh, if, that, if a building is individually uh, eligible for the National Register, or if it's a key property, which um, I've been informed is an Iowa City particular designation um, that es essentially flags properties that um, while they're while they are individually eligible, um, have a very important um, status status. Excuse me, in the his, historic fabric of Iowa City. C is contributing properties, and um, we have changed the wording there um, to note that these are properties um, that add to the historical integrity or architectural qualities that, um, that make a local uh, or national historic district significant. Um, and there are a lot of um, fine, I'll call them nuances, that might not be quite the right word, about contributing properties. But um, we, in, in an effort to um, simply qualify uh, the building types in Iowa City, have used have put that in as our definition. And then finally, D, non-contributing properties. Um, so I think those are the, the two uh, most significant changes. Um, Any, anything that you can see adding besides that? I mean, there are small word changes here and there, but. Yeah, I think you see in the sustainability section, we clarified that um, the, the um, it's not just the downtown urban renewal area for the silver yeah. certification right. that was discussed at the last one. And then the cover memo to these, this item on the agenda notes, uh, oh. probably less important than, than some of your other discussions, but there is a direct reference to the 2016-2017 uh, strategic plan in the opening paragraph of the policy. And, um, you know, just another couple of months that's going to be replaced. So you may want to consider some more generic language there as opposed to the actual language of the plan. Which is what you did at the last meeting in the uh, exceptional benefits section. We omitted the reference to the strategic plan and simply called out the, the values that you wanted to continue to maintain. 
And we could do that same thing uh, or something similar in the introductory paragraph of the TIF policy language here. I'd be inclined to keep it the way it is now, but um, if during the process, uh, once we get it to the full council level, uh, we amend the, uh, the strategic plan, we could insert whatever that new language is. If I'm being clear, I hope I am. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fine too, Jim. From my perspective, you know, if, if things aren't falling in line with strategic plan, we really need to take an extra careful look at why we would be approving them. Um, and then, yeah, we can decide later if we feel we need to add any extra language. I mean, I think just simply referencing the strategic plan um, probably is, is uh, sufficient in my opinion. I would agree. Anything else from staff that you want to input before we start discussion? Okay. Uh, I, I, Open up then to committee uh, discussion. Well, I, I wanted to clarify one point because uh, when I read through the revised draft, I realized it wasn't clear to me. So uh, immediately before the boxed uh, entry of what I recommended in my October the second memo is a sentence that reads, the provisions of this section will apply until such time as a downtown form-based code is adopted. Uh, uh, I certainly did not intend to delete that language, and as I read the amended version, it's not deleted, but it's hard to see. <laughs> so I, I just want to clarify that that sentence remains in what we're considering today. Any other clarification that's needed? All right, discussion. Well, I, I should uh, say something about uh, the boxed in item uh, that appeared in the October the second memo. What I was trying to do is um, uh, take into account our discussion from the prior meeting, clarify a few points, st strengthen a, a, a few elements, uh, and uh, you know try to be as clear as I can about uh, a, a pathway that would justify deviations from the, uh, the, uh, the building height map uh, and the, the, uh, what kind of exceptional public benefits could justify such uh, a deviation. And also, to be clear, uh, as item five states, this list is not intended to constrain the developer's ingenuity in proposing public benefits that clearly help foster an inclusive, just, and sustainable city. Uh, so, so that people can be creative and recommend elements that they think would do that. And then the city manager will, would process the, the proposal and we'd move on. Other discussion? I guess I don't have anything really to add on top of that. Do we have a motion to approve? Uh, Jeff, were you on the verge of saying Well, something? I think there's a couple of clarifications that I would like yeah. to have if, okay. you, um, if, if you move forward with a motion. and. Um, from the previous policy uh, draft up at the top you had uh, this may seem this may seem nitpicky but it's I think it's important for, for staff as we look to utilize this policy you have um, these public benefits may include but are not limited to and then mayor Throgmorton in your draft you just have these public benefits may include you dropped the are not limited to piece and I don't know if that was intentional to um, uh, I don't uh, some clarification on that would help. Yeah, well, uh, let me respond to that. I, I think uh, the changes I made are still consistent with the earlier version. It does say that the amendments I'm suggesting do say the public benefits may include. That does not mean they must include, to be clear about that. Correct. And, and then the, this final sentence on item five opens up the door to lots of other possibilities, but, just as the earlier. And version. I guess that was the second clarification, is that final sentence on number five, if it's included within number five, it refers to the list of paintings, photographs, yeah. sculptures, poems. It should poems. probably be a separate sentence, okay. not in item number five. Okay. okay. Thank you. That's what I, I, I thought. And then um, uh, one point on that uh, last paragraph where you uh, talk about the um, 
uh, tallest portion of the project must be stepped back from its street frontages. Uh, uh, as we found out with the 7 South Lynn project, and I think there are other um, properties in downtown that would fall in this category, sometimes the, the parcels downtown are so small that achieving step backs are not as realistic. Um, and, and those are unique properties, but I think you need to you need to think about whether you want the, to to be firm with must be stepped back because that may not be achievable on on some properties. Um, I get what you're trying to to um, say there, and you're really looking at how the building design impacts neighboring historic properties. But when you use that specific term, step back, um, we we could run into some some trouble with that down the road. I think I mean exactly what I wrote. Uh, okay. Because, because it uh, it pertains to uh, streets that have uh, currently have a I don't know recognizable historic character. It does not pertain to streets that don't, and you know roughly half the downtown is in that situation. There's not really a distinctive historic character associated with them. Any other clarification? Nope. Okay. All right, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Moved by Cole, seconded by Throgmorton. Further discussion? Well, before we vote, I am going to comment. Um, I think it's probably not any surprise from the discussions we've had going through. Um, I'm not going to support this. Um, for me, it starts with the height map that we're tying this to. Um, I believe, and I think a lot of other people, when you look at the, the letters that we have gotten from the chamber, the downtown district, and some individuals within the community, that tying this to that map um, is a flawed process. Um, I think the map itself, um, as we had a memo a few weeks or months ago from Jeff, I'd asked kind of for some background of how, how that map came to be. And one, I think the, the lack of real public vetting of that map um, during the comprehensive plan process, um, having it tied to parking um, and what the, the consultant saw as marketable five years ago, I think uh, makes this uh, particularly restrictive. Um, and I, I'm not comfortable with it. I don't think it's fair to property owners or to developers who might consider um, redeveloping some of these properties. And in, in extension of that, in tying it to that map, uh, it seems to me that we really are uh, restricting the ability to increase our density downtown, which when we talk about a sustainable city uh, can help prevent some of the urban sprawl. It, uh, we give up opportunities. In losing that opportunity for density, we give up housing, office space, um, opportunities for public engagement areas that I think are absolutely essential in terms of continuing the vitality and building on that downtown. We continue to hear from companies who are kind of on the cutting edge of technology and particularly in the high-tech software areas who want more office space downtown, but essentially really want living space downtown for those employees. And they bring incredible benefits in terms of uh, money to, you know, in our restaurants in our shops and, and everything. Um, I know through the, through the campaign process, uh, one of the questions that the downtown district had for candidates was the, related to the whole softening of uh, r retail and the difficulty that they are having. And I think the idea that we, uh, in doing this, basically slow down or restrict the ability to have more office space and more housing downtown also then has a negative impact on our retail downtown. Um, so those are those are my basic thoughts. So I yeah I will be voting against this. So, so I'd like to um, respond just a little bit. I understand the point you're making, Susan, um, and of course we have been discussing this for I don't know a year or whatever, yeah. <laughs> pretty long time. Uh, I want to go back to the uh, the minutes of our last <coughs> meeting, which appear on page three of our PDF. Uh, so, according to it, I stated, I'm, well, I, I'll quote it, Throgmorton stated he is very eager to hear specific recommendations about how they can use TIF to support both development and preservation in the downtown, thereby fulfilling the overall vision expressed in the comprehensive plan. He quoted, 
to preserve and enhance the historic buildings and character of the downtown while encouraging appropriate infill development with a mix of building uses, unquote. My whole purpose in our year-long discussion has been to find a way to use TIF to do both, preserve the historic character of the downtown and uh, encourage appropriate infill development with a mix of building uses. I'm eager to hear other proposals about how to do that, but I have not heard them in the past year. So what we have before us, and I'm eager to support, is a, or an amendment to the TIF policy that is clearly designed to accomplish the objectives specified in the downtown part of the comprehensive plan. And, and I guess I would respond to that, Jim, that we had focus groups a year ago um, at a point where people really didn't have any idea kind of where we were headed with this. Uh, once we have gotten to the point of some significant specificity, uh, this, count, this committee has chosen to move forward without really allowing any additional organized input in terms of you know, either us holding a public hearing or doing, we have to, we had talked about having some groups, but as Jeff said, we can't really do that and limit anybody else. So I don't think there really has been that opportunity um, in, a, in a comprehensive, organized fashion to get input, uh, as you're suggesting, from those groups and individuals who feel real strongly that this doesn't work. Um, and I would suggest that simply tying to this map, um, what that says to me then is, the thought is that height is inherently bad for historic preservation because that map is all about height. And so, again, that's that's why I can't support this as it's written. So. I want a quick comment uh, on a couple different things that have been raised. Um, first of all, um, this question of sp sprawl and height, um, I think that's an absolutely valid point to raise, um, although I haven't seen in the last five to ten years that I've closely observed this as an issue that we've tied height of a downtown building to sprawl, at least that I'm aware of, that we've said that we're not gonna do any peripheral development based upon the height of our downtown. I haven't seen that, just as a, as a, as a preliminary matter. The second thing is, is that this particular committee has solicited input from people from throughout the community for, near, for nearly a year and a half. Um, at least in the agendas that I have seen, I have not seen any request for public hearings from you um, th that I've been able to observe. Uh, so I think it's important to, to, to identify that, that we haven't seen in a, in a setting that particular issue. Um, we did get substantial feedback from the architectural community, from the development community, from labor, from environmental groups, from community groups. I think this particular, com and, and all of this has been televised in a public setting where everyone's available to come. So I think we have given input to the best we can consistent with moving forward with the policy. Um, the question of ultimately TIF is a public investment in a private uh, structure, right? I mean, that's really what it is. And I think when we have private investment um, and they're paying for it all themselves, um, really council is totally out out of that. Uh, really, the only thing we do is we set the rules, we set the zoning. Um, really, we, we have no control over what happens to that process because they have to apply our, our existing rules, as it should be. Um, but when we have a public process with TIF, I think it's extraordinarily important that the public have an opportunity to see how these private investments affect our downtown. Our downtown is a public realm. And I think what, what this particular committee, at least, I think what Jim and I are trying to accomplish is that if there are deviations, that these are clearly projected to the community as early as possible. I think that's absolutely critical because we are requiring, or there is a request for public dollars on that. Um, and I think as to this map, um, again, with this, consistent with this concept of a public process, um, if there are particular needs for amendment into the future, uh, those can be presented, uh, but those would only occur after there's adequate opportunity for public input into this process. And I guess I don't think that that's unreasonable to honor this particular um, way of going about with height. And then secondly, as, as we've talked about at the beginning of the meeting, this does essentially allow deviation from um, this, this particular map 
if there's an extraordinarily public <coughs> benefit that's identified. So I'm very comfortable with the amount of um, public input that we've gotten, that we've, that we've obtained, um, that none of this has come as a surprise to anyone, and that we've done everything we possibly can to ensure maximum public input. Um, and then ultimately it's gonna be a, a, an issue for council to make ratification or if there's any other changes. So that's what I would like to see. And I'm very um, happy with the result that we've obtained. And I'm gonna be enthusiastically supporting uh, this change to the policy. Susan, I'd like to make a couple other points. Uh, with regard to the map, I think during our last uh, committee meeting, uh, we discussed uh, the possibility of amending the map. I'm co as I was during our last meeting, I'm completely open to the, to the idea of going through a process of reconsidering and amending the map uh, over time. But I think we ought to start where we are, which is the map that exists and is a part of our comprehensive plan. The second thing has to do with um, um, getting input from the public. Uh, I, I think we should direct the staff to do something would be very easy, and that is to explicitly schedule a public hearing uh, about the uh, proposed amendments prior to the council uh, uh, formally formally introduce. Well, I don't know how it works during our meetings. You know, prior to the time that we actually discuss the proposed amendments during the full council meeting, if necessary, we can defer action for uh, to this following meeting. Uh, so I, I want to be clear that th there's no effort whatsoever to kind of shut off public input. Uh, I, I think what the effort is, is to move ahead on a process that we've been uh, undertaking for the past year and a half and get it to the full council level so that the full public will have an opportunity to uh, weigh in on it. Yeah, I'll just make one final comment. I, I would have to go back and look at all the minutes, but I certainly recall uh, significant discussion here at the table about more public input um, in whether it was uh, you know a public hearing or somehow allowing because we've had that request from certainly the downtown district and others to actually kind of sit down and discuss this and I think when you we're looking at policies that with the complexity that this has and the significant impact that this has um, simply for people to come to a microphone and speak um, kind of at a council and not be able to really sit down and engage in dialogue of trying to figure out what what works, what doesn't work, what other suggestions, um, I think is pretty problematic. And I don't think even just sending memos, which certainly they've done, and that's um, kind of been the avenue they've had. So I think we've had that discussion, and the, and the decision was not to do it. Um, and again, based on the other comments, I understand where the two of you are coming from, and we just have a fundamental difference. I just do not believe that tying the TIF to this map um, is the way to go, given how that map was generated uh, to put in that comprehensive plan. Jim, so what sort of we, timeline were you thinking of a public hearing? Because I would be open to that concept, but I do not want it set out you know, 45 days from now. Because I, I was anticipating that we would be presenting this for consideration by the council would it be at the next meeting? It would follow standard processes. I assume it would be at the next meeting. Next meeting. I mean, is it possible to schedule a public hearing between now and the consideration before the... You just do it at the meeting itself. Yeah. With the so item. Like, like, a, yeah, like, like any, an other, any other public... Okay. So I thought, I thought we were the request for a separate public hearing on this particular topic. Okay. Well, I mean, the public will have the opportunity then during that process. So... Right. Okay. Right. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Two to one. Mims in the negative. Okay. All right. Moving on then. Uh, staff report. I don't have anything to report. Okay. Anything from the committee? Nope. Nope. Any other business at all? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much.